Welcome to Garden Valley Church Podcasts. We are so looking forward to having you join us today. Welcome everyone to the Highway of Holiness podcast. I am your host, Audrey Frabel, and I am so very excited that I have an awesome guest with us this morning who I honor, and I'm so excited he's here and is able to uh, work this out with us, Lucas Levine. Um, Lucas Levine is part of our Grace family. Uh, If you are part of Garden Valley Church, you will know his name most likely. He was with us uh, this last Sunday, delivered a powerful word, um, which you can listen to on our app as well, um, or our website. And uh, Lucas is amazing. He has over 30 years of experience in ministry. He Uh, leads a ministry called Karis Ministries and travels all over the globe internationally, not just here in America, he's on the road more than he is at home. Um, He is apostolic, prophetic, he uh, amazing minister of God. So Lucas, I'm so glad you're here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this. (laughs) So we're going to chat, dive more into the topic of holiness. And I'm so excited again, because Lucas has so much experience and wisdom and knowledge. I really uh, want, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about the topic and what you would even first describe as the word holiness. Sure. You know, I think a lot of people think when we talk holiness, we're talking about being set apart. That's the definition that most people run with, but it actually doesn't mean that. Uh, Holiness means to be full of one thing. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking the first commandment, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, that is holiness right there. God wants every part of your life. So holiness is, I'm not trying to separate myself from this. That's the result that happens after holiness has come. Um, But it's more the, instead of I'm running away from the things that I need to be away from, I'm running to God. So good. And as I run to God and I partake of time with him and fellowship with him, I begin to grow in attributes with him, that kind of stuff. That's the holiness that transforms us. So good. I can attest, uh, you know, a year ago when the Lord started to speak to me of Mm -hmm. holiness, that word just started coming to me. Um, and I began to ask him more questions, but that is exactly how I have felt, what you just described. It made me, at first, I'll be honest, at first I thought, oh no, I kind of wanted to resist. Sure. But I knew the Holy Spirit was right there with me. And so as I began to lean more into him and the word and study and scripture, Mm -hmm. I just wanted more. And it really has transformed me. I've had so much transformation on studying the word uh, of holiness and getting into scripture. What does it say? Right. There's so much in the word about holiness. Um, I, I do. I want more of it. So it's it's less about going, I can't do that, but I want, I can do this. I want him and I want, I want to be in more in relationship with him. Well, think about like, we both have kids and we both have um, just toddlers basically. <laughs> yep. And so with my young guy, if I'm constantly telling him no, 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 but I'm not pointing him to something. So you know this because you deal with it. Uh, so if you don't want him or her to do something, uh, instead of just, you know, saying, hey, this is, you can't do this. Instead of saying, no, here, take this instead, mm-hmm. if you put them towards something. And I, I think that's yeah. what, you know, in the heart of God, he's always pointing you to uh, towards something. He's mm-hmm. always putting a forward momentum to you. Yeah. And so with holiness, uh, it's not something we need to, uh, you know, have this idea of I got to be perfect. I got to just... I got to do this, uh, you know, God's making me perform, that kind of stuff. No, God is just wanting um, me to be me, to come to him and let that natural transformation process happen. Yeah, absolutely. I do think about, um, as you were describing, you know, in, in a parenting context, a lot of times too, it's me just being present, you know, being yeah. present with the child, just coming into the room or sitting down, kneeling down. And uh, my present shifts, my presence shifts things with the child. Same with the Lord, you know, mm-hmm. just being with him and getting in his presence. There, there's something that I've told people for years. For many years, I pastored before I traveled and, and do what I do now. And I would tell parents uh, with their teenagers, and, you know, teenagers want to do their own things. They want to go in different directions. I'd say, 
have your kid in church every week. And I remember there was a, a couple and their, their child had did something and they were like, well, he's not allowed to come to youth group this week. And I said, that's the exact opposite of what you need to be doing. Yeah. He needs to be there. He needs to be plugged in. Mm -hmm. Like, well, maybe he doesn't want to be there and, and he's not going to do anything. I said, just being in the atmosphere of God mm -hmm. will transform you. It mm -hmm. causes an order yeah. to come inside. And so you're dealing with a rebellious issue. Yeah. And so the best thing he can do is be in the presence of God because that authority will begin to transform things. And so they argued with me. <laughs> and so for the next, it was a couple of months, he didn't come. And the problems kept getting worse oh, and wow. worse and worse and worse. And so they were in my office and they were just going and going and going. I said, I said, okay, fine. You're not listening to me anyways. So here's the deal. I'm asking for one month. You do what I say, just regardless if you disagree with me, whatever, just do what I say and bring him every week and make sure he's there on Sunday mornings. He's there on the Wednesday night. Uh, service and that's it so good and it was awesome because at the end of the month he was a completely transformed kid wow and they're like he's nice to us now he's not yelling at us all the time wow he's not what whatever but it's it's just being in the presence of god yeah I, and i think that aspect right there again you don't have to perform you don't have to make something happen you just need to be present mm -hmm. and so just, you know, this is why in Psalms it talks about we need that daily time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as we look at David, he's <clears throat> such a, a great character study because in the beginning of Psalms, he's griping, complaining. Mm -hmm. He's letting everybody have it. I mean, sometimes he's ready for the whole world to just, you know, be <laughs> tossed aside. But then by the end of it, he's different. Mm -hmm. He's like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You, those people are awesome. I'm sorry I complained about them. Yeah. And that. Because the presence brings the patience. It brings the peace. It yeah. brings the the things that we need. Yeah. Amen. And we're wired to be with him, wired to be in oneness with him, mm -hmm. which is a lot um, like John 14 through chapters, John 14 through 17. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, I'm going to go away, but I'm sending another advocate. I'm sending the Holy Spirit in my place. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's the New Testament paradigm there, the New Testament understanding that we have to receive, the trust that we have to receive. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when we talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, the opposite of holy. Okay, so holy is being full of one thing. But in scriptures, it defines the opposite of holiness is actually commonness. Mm, right, right. And so if we get into a topic here, if we're talking about the Holy Spirit versus demonic spirits and that stuff, the demonic spirit is common, meaning it has no value, it has no identity, it has nothing to it. So that's why it, it, there's an interesting story when Jesus goes to cast out uh, the demon out of these this group of people, and they're like, well, at least send us into the pigs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Uh, because they're in such a place of desolation and such a place of... You know, scripture says with a demon that they go in the dry places. Right. There's nothing for them. There, There's, you know, nothing there. And so that commonness mm -hmm. strips us to nothingness. But holiness does the exact opposite. It doesn't take away who we are. It actually makes who we are. Right. And so that's why there's such a fight for it. Uh, because obviously, you know, the enemy doesn't want us hanging around the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and, and having that time. But uh, he doesn't want you to just be still in God's presence. He knows that that's one of the most powerful things. Yeah. Amen. That is so good. Um, I What I'm thinking, too, of as you're sharing is the common being the world. Yeah. And I feel like right now there is such a woo and a call to the world, like come out of the world, but not even just the world, also the church who've been playing games with the world. I can confess myself on this. Sure. And the Lord's like, come out of any worldliness. I just feel like he's wanting to bring the church fully into Christ. It's interesting when you're saying that, because right now we all know what's going on in, in the world today. And so there's this outcry, especially in the U.S. right now of you have to be like us. You you have to believe like us, you have to think like us, you have to do like us, and da da da. And what they're doing, and they're not realizing it because they're trying to think what we're representing and all that kind of stuff is so special and so amazing and all that kind of stuff. But what they're actually doing is making everybody conform to 
the same thing, mm. which is mm -hmm. common. Yes. But in scripture, <laughs> God doesn't want you that way. He wants you to be individualistic. That's why he only made one of you. Yeah. I mean, there's never been anybody like you in the history of time. Yes. You know, and I had a, someone working for me and they're like, I want to do what you do. And I want to, I want to, I want to go around the world and, I, and you know, all these things. And I said, why? I said, my, my life's cool, but it's, it would be pretty boring for you. <laughs> uh, one, cause you have different gifting than me yeah. and you have so much to offer. Be the original God made you to be, Yeah, you know, and you're going to go so much further. Yes. I, we were talking about someone before this, uh, about a preacher, RW Shambach. Mm -hmm. When I was a, a teenager, uh, I was so impressed by him. I remember seeing him and all these amazing miracles and everything. So I had watched a broadcast with him and I had word for word written it down. I think I was 16 or so. And so I had memorized that sermon and that week I was supposed to preach in youth group. And so I took this sermon of his that I'd memorized and I go, and it took him, mind you, like an hour and a half to preach this on the, uh, in the service. And so I got up in front of the youth group. I preached that sermon in 17 minutes. <laughs> And I remember everybody was confused in the room. Everybody was looking at me like, what the heck, you know? And you know, the, what Stephen Killer is, I don't think any of the thing he talked about was really anything for them anyways, you know, and, and that, but I just, it was so amazing what he did. So I just want to do it. So I was copying it. And I remember my youth pastor coming up to me and, you know, I didn't get that result that everybody was going to be at the altar crying and having that big moment. And it was, it was more like everybody, it was crickets. And so my youth pastor comes up and he goes, yeah, that, that was good. And go ahead and sit back down. And then for the next 20 minutes, he unpacked that sermon that I preached and made it in a way that was for the teenagers. And then everybody comes to the altar. And I remember going home and I was so mad at God. Wow. And I was like, God, I spent hours on this. <laughs> I did all this and they should have done this. And the Lord's like, well, first of all, you didn't spend hours on this. Uh, R.W. Shambach did because he spent time hearing me wow. for the crowd he was in front of. Wow. You didn't even ask me what the youth group needed. Wow. And so by being that copy, it didn't do anything. Right. And that's, I think, a lot of what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to give you that, that thing you need to be like everybody else because that person's successful and they look good and they have the marriage you want, they have the kids you want, they have the dog you want, the whole thing. And the reality is, is well, that's great, that's them. Mm -hmm. But that's not you. Yeah. God wants you to be that unique person yep. uh, that you're made to be. In, in fact, 1 Peter 2, 9 says, we're a holy uh, people, a chosen people, but it says we're peculiar too. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, well, why are we peculiar? Well, that's because we're all unique, mm. you know, and that's the, yeah. I think when we come to heaven uh, and when we get a glimpse of what heaven really is and, you know, scripture says it's a, a bunch of stuff, but when you see all the different people there, I think some people are going to be shocked. <laughs> Uh, you know, I had one person tell me, well, when we get to heaven, we're all going to sing this style of music. <laughs> I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> I, I think we're going to be in for a lot of things that, and I, uh, there was a preacher I heard and I, I kind of think it's uh, funny, but he said, I think a lot of people are going to, when they enter heaven, are going to have to go to renewing the mind 101 <laughs> uh, because they had all these ideas of what they thought it, you know, wow. yeah. it was. Yeah. And they're going to realize there are so many different personalities around the world. Mm -hmm and so many different people. You know? So good. Yeah, that has been another word that I didn't think of when I first started whole, uh, studying holiness was the word different mm. that I've been thinking a ton about. And I think I think even some of the definitions line right up with uh, holiness. It is different, but each one of us, like you said, um, are to look different and really come out of these like cookie cutter boxes or ideas of uh -huh. what we thought we were supposed to look like or thought we were supposed to do. Um, you know, we were even just talking about this too, a little bit of about our spiritual gifts test and even some of those, sure, sure they're, you know, they point yeah. us in the right direction, but it's a paper, right? right. Yeah. So we can't even put all of our eggs in that basket, right? Yeah, it, it was... Uh... It was some years ago when I was pastoring, I was in Washington, D.C. for uh, a meeting 
And I remember Lou Engle was ministering that day. I and love him. I'd never heard him before that day. <laughs> and so I wasn't knowing what to expect. And it was uh, a right to life oh, uh -huh. uh, thing. So there was like 90% of the crowd was Catholic. And the other 10% of us were, you know, whatever. And so there was hundreds of thousands of people there. And I remember uh, he asked everybody to pray. And this is how you knew the difference between the, the Catholic folks and the, everybody else. <laughs> so the Catholic folks all get on their knees yeah. with rosary beads uh -huh. and, and they're praying and they're doing the whatever the prayers they do, you know. And then the rest of us were with their hands lifted, you know, and, and, and whatever. And the Lord said, open your eyes and shut up. And I was like, okay. And so I, I look around and the Lord said, do you see this? All different kinds of things. He said you have to learn to turn the whole army on. Wow. Not just part of it. And you see what he's doing and he's just talking about holiness and the right to life and, and those things. And I remember God gave me a picture of myself in the future. Mm. And it shook me because I saw myself, actually, this is quite a few years ago, it's 15 plus years ago. And so it was a little bit older than I am today. And I saw myself praying and then I heard myself praying and I freaked out, not by what I looked at, because I, I knew I looked older and a lot more gray in the, <laughs> the beard and that stuff, but uh, it was what I was saying. And I knew immediately I'm not that man mm -hmm. because it was more humble. It was more broken. It was more raw. Wow. And it freaked me out. And that night, I went home, I told my wife about what had happened and everything. And, she, and she's like, you know, you just got to go with what God's given you. And he's calling you to a place of prayer. And I think it was interesting, too, because it, as a preacher, a lot of times, you know, or as, you know, we want to see a, a ministry happen or those kind of things. He didn't show me any of those kind of events. He showed me praying. And it wasn't in front of people. It was just me and him. So, uh, mm -hmm. so about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, I'm, I'm dead asleep. And then I start hearing the Lord humming. And so I hear da, 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 I'm hearing that and I'm thinking, I think that's Raiders of the Lost Ark or something like that. And I'm thinking, what in the world? Lord, are you humming the theme song, you know, to Indiana Jones? And the Lord's like, get up. And I'm like, Lord, seriously, it's like four in the morning. Go back to bed. And Lord's like, no, get up, get up, get up. And so finally I'm like, okay. So we had, we were living in a town home and I went down to the first floor where my office was. And I remember the Lord uh, said, I want you to open the book of Ezekiel. And uh, to Ezekiel 37, mm -hmm. when he has a vision of Valley of Dry Bones. And mm -hmm. I'm seeing that. And I'm like, okay, I know this story. And he goes, I know you preached this last week. And I'm like, yeah. And he, and so then the Lord showed me something I'd never seen uh, in any time reading it. And I've read that passage a lot of times, like a lot of people have. And one of the things that was interesting in the passage, and there's a lot we could unpack with this, but just one thing is it says the hand of the Lord was upon me. And then it says the, the other hand was underneath me and he lifted me into the valley. So where were God's hands on the top of him, which represents the authority on his head? But the bottom holding him underneath represents he's just holding him. Mm. So it was that, yes, there's a mission here, but I'm also holding you. And at that time in his life, you know, ministry wasn't going great. Nobody wanted to hear his messages anymore. His wife had died and he was he was wore out. And again, we can unpack this in a long way and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But what's amazing about that is you see God handling Ezekiel. And so uh, he says, son of man, can these bones live? And then I love this because it's a real human moment we get to see. And it's something actually Jesus does in the New Testament. Uh, it, it, Ezekiel answers him in sarcasm and says, oh, Lord God, you know. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you see a raw moment. Yeah. He's not like in the moment, ready to minister, <laughs> take on the whatever. He's all anointed and pumped. No, this is him raw. Mm -hmm. He talks back to the Lord. Yeah, he yeah. does. But some, God t gets him to turn on and uh, reignites the fire and, and does all that in him. 
and then also in the people of Israel. Again, we won't go back into that, but now take to the story in the New Testament where uh, Jesus meets the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. And I love this story. I I love this story. It's it's one of my favorites too, because (laughs) how many disciples does it take to go to a grocery store? Oh, I always laugh about that. And he sends all 12, (laughs) which basically means Jesus needed some alone time. Yeah, he needed some space. Yeah, he was, you know, he'd been on the road with them. They were probably whining. Oh yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) And, And so he's in that moment where he's ready to be alone. And then here comes this woman who's needy and needs ministry. And uh, in that moment, he ministers to her. And then when they come back, they're like, we've brought food. And he said, no, I already had food to eat. Yep. There, there's something happening when, mm-hmm. you know, when the Lord was humming the theme song for Indiana Jones, he was saying, your prayer time's the adventure time. Mm. That's where you really experience. And yeah. so... There's a word that's been used by some prayer leaders that I really love. It's the word of being fascinated. And so when you're fascinated by God, because you know that when you go spend time with them, something amazing is going to happen, yeah. something awesome and that kind of stuff. When you know that all of a sudden prayer time isn't boring. It isn't, you know, just, oh, I got an hour of this yeah. or, yeah. you know, it's staff prayer time. Great. <laughs> Can this go by a little bit you know, quicker? <laughs> yeah. No, instead it's like, no, this is something amazing. When that happens, it's like, it's like falling in love. When mm-hmm. you fall in love, what do you want to do? You want to be with that person yep, all, all the, the time. time. I, my wife and I were laughing the other night because we used to go to midnight movies, <laughs> you know, and be out to like two, three in the morning <laughs> with the young adults, you know, and hang out. And we and then we'd call each other on the way home in the car <laughs> and it would be who would be the first person to hang up. Yeah. Fall asleep yeah. with the phone in your ear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and now it's like eh, it's about eleven. You know, let's <laughs> let's call it a night. Yep. You know, it, and we're thinking we're so crazy as as kids, and mm. but we wanted to be with each mm-hmm. other just constantly. So good. You know? I mean, we still do. Yeah. And, and that stuff. I mean, I I definitely that's the desire of my heart. But yeah, when there's that fascination there. Yeah. So going to holiness, that wanting to be with God. Yeah that holiness, it fills you with one thing and it's just God. Yeah. I just want God. Yeah. I don't care about anything else in this moment. I don't care if I have to go to work. I don't care if I, you know, have to do this or that. I just want God. Mm -hmm. And that something begins to transform me because everything else goes out the door. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Um, I love that you shared that. It's so beautiful. I was thinking too, just recently, literally in the past couple of weeks, the Lord has asked me, do you see how you're praying now? Mm. And I didn't realize and I went, wow, I have entered into, however you want to call it, a new level, a new intimacy with the Lord in prayer where I'm not praying for anything. I'm not praying for, you know, people to be saved or an individual person or a problem or a circumstance. Right. I'm just praying to him. I just want to be with him. I'm just coming mm-hmm. into that space, that time just to be with him. And I can't wait, just like what you shared. And I don't think I've ever been here before in prayer. I mean, there's times where I disciplined myself to be there. Right. But this is like, I can't wait. I'm like a kid, you know, in a candy store. Like, I cannot mm-hmm. wait with to be with the Lord. There's something renewed in me um, just in these past few months or so where I can't wait to be with him. I yeah. can't wait to get up and be with him. I don't want to go to sleep. I just want to be with him. And I can't wait to hear what he has to say to me the next day or the next time, you know, yeah. he's talking to me again. Well, it's the adventure. Yes. It's more adventurous than it's ever been before. I think inside of each of us is a pioneer spirit. We're in Oregon right now. And I know well, being on the West Coast, it's pioneers, not, not yeah. in Texas. It's the same kind of, you know, feeling and that kind of thing. There's this thing that I got to explore. I got to discover. I, I I want something amazing. I, I don't want the ordinary. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I don't want what, you know, it's not okay. You know, okay, so watch this analogy. Okay, so we sleep in a bed, right? So we sleep in a box. <laughs> then we wake up in the morning and you eat cereal from a <laughs> box. And then you go to your car, which is a box, to go sit at work, which is a cubicle or a room, and it's a box. And then we drive home in our box to get back in our box to go to sleep. 
Who wants to live in the box? Yeah, not me. I do not like boxes personally. I want to live outside of the box for sure. I, I had a, a pastor friend and it's, it's really funny. He is in a small town and there's really only one restaurant besides, I think, uh, um, what is, uh, Dairy Queen. Oh, Because there's yeah. always Dairy Queen in a small town. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but in this town, they had a Chinese restaurant. So he would go every day to the Chinese buffet because that's where everybody would be. <laughs> and uh, it was great because he would just sit in there and he would write his sermons. Mm. Not in the office, not in the whatever, at the Chinese place. And he'd sit there for like three hours. And he would just listen to people and listen to what they're going through. And listen to that and just saying, okay, God, what's your heart? What do you want me to do with these people? It was always the adventure. He was always going to just, I'm hearing God for my city. I'm so hearing God good. for my town. And what's crazy is that town only has maybe about eight, 900 people. And he has 700 of them in his church. Wow. You know, and I, I honestly wow. think if you're asking for an ingredient of why that happens, I think it's the way he does his sermon prep. Wow. You know, he doesn't sit in his office. He doesn't, you know, tuck away. No, he gets in a place where he can't hear. It's yeah. an adventure. Yeah. And for some folks, that would freak them out. I know, <laughs> oh, that's brother, you know, whatever. You, know, you do what you want. You yeah, know. yeah. Uh, I have some of my best moments when I'm not actually looking for it. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I mean, and you've been in ministry way longer than I have, but there's been times where I've been in, you know, on my computer in the Word. And I'm like, I don't know what you're saying, God. I'm not hearing anything. Mm -hmm. I got to preach in like, you know, four days. And are you going to say something to me? <laughs> Download something. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's in the moment I drive away. I'm in the car. Or I'm somewhere where it might even be noisy where I didn't want to be. And boom, he just speaks and drops this word to me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not even present anymore wherever I'm at. I'm sitting there in body, but emotionally, spiritually, I'm somewhere yeah. else. You know, this this whole thing on holiness, it's an adventure. And, uh, you know, you never know where it's going to take you. I was at a flea market and um, I'm just having fun looking for stuff and something I like to do. And as I'm walking, this little six-year-old girl walks up to me and she goes, you have a beautiful aura about you. <laughs> and I said, thank you. And she goes, do you know what that is? I said, yeah. And she goes, are you one of us? I said, kind of, but a little bit different. <laughs> and she goes, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, you, uh, you know, you were raised in witchcraft and with yeah. heaven. Wow. And this is what you're into and your mom and your grandmother. Wow. And those kind of things. I, I said, um, where I'm different is I'm a Christian and uh, my life belongs to God, not Gaia. And her mom comes over and immediately stopped talking to my daughter, you know, that kind of thing. And so, of course, you know, and then she begins to ask me questions and it leads into a moment at the flea market when I was not thinking about ministry, not thinking about speaking to someone who was a witch and a real witch and, wow. and that stuff. And it was so cool because as that time went further, uh, I found out, you know, a little bit about her history and everything. And then she began to ask me questions about the prophetic and, and that deal. And that just led to moments. She's like, how did you know this? And how did you know this? And how did you, and I said, I didn't know that, but God did. Wow. And God was just speaking in the moment yeah. in that conversation, which was cool. And then she gives her life to Jesus at the flea wow. market. Her, her mom, uh, the grandmother comes, her mom, and get to lead her and everything. And then all of a sudden that turns into an invitation mm. to go speak at their coven. Oh, my goodness. And I'm thinking about that going, wow. uh, um, I, you know, I don't want to turn into a frog. You know, I've seen enough <laughs> sci-fi on television, <laughs> you know, and, and that stuff. And the Lord said, I want you to go. Wow. And I'm like, uh-huh. And so... They said, would you come and speak about angels? Come on. And I'm thinking, okay. And it was funny because we had had a meeting as a team, uh, the board, and we were talking about different things we were going to work on. And I've been, for a season just before this, I'd constantly been bombarded by questions of what are angels, what are demons, and what's the biblical thing on that? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to write that book. I don't want to do that series, <laughs> Lord. That's just going to put me weird and out there and whatever. And the Lord's like, you're already weird anyway. So, <laughs> you know, get over your bad self. So I'm like, okay. And so I, I do it. And 
Um, they asked me to come speak on it. So I come and it's this wow. place with about a hundred people in the room, all part of different covens and everything. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, this is the, you know, wildest thing. And the person before me is talking about astrophysical projections and, you know, it was pretty over my head, wow. a lot of it. And so I had a 45 minute slot and I was next up and I just said, Hey, I'm, I'm Lucas and I'm here to talk about angels today. And I, I said, I may not have the approach that maybe you or have heard from before, but I have it from a biblical perspective. I'm a Christian and a minister. And I just begin to share and it, things I have experienced personally with angels. And uh, at the end of the thing, they were like, keep rolling, keep going. And so we did. And it ended up, I was in there for like two plus hours. And then it was so open. I just said, how many of you have even heard Christianity like this? Wow. And most of them hadn't. And I said, how many would like to learn more about Jesus? And literally about a third of the people in the room raised their hands, got to lead them to the Lord in the coven, oh you know, and, and that stuff. And, Whoa. you know, it, wow. you never know because it's an adventure. Uh huh. It's an adventure. Yeah. And that adventure comes with your time with God, which yeah. is getting full of one thing. What is that? Him. Yeah. And God's not afraid of anything. Yeah. My favorite, one of my favorite verses in scripture, besides the one I said earlier in Amos 3, 3, is in Genesis where it says that the spirit hovered over over the darkness. Mm -hmm. In other words, God wasn't afraid of the darkness. Mm, I love that. You know, and so. Yeah, that's yeah. how I was feeling yesterday with Halloween. Um, right. Someone put something out and I had shared it too because I just laughed. Um, something about the biggest demon coming out of Halloween is the religious spirit, <laughs> <laughs> which maybe isn't totally true, but it definitely comes wow. out. And I thought, yeah, I really saw that, especially this year. I mean, just a lot of things that were said. And I just kept thinking, so are we going to hide? I, that's not right. what my father's called me to do. Sure. You know, more reason to come out and be the light. Now, yes, there are real things going on out there. I don't deny that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, being the light and not being afraid of the darkness, we can't be. Yeah. And, and that comes from identity, knowing who we are, knowing who he is. Mm -hmm and walking in our God-given authority and that power that comes from His Holiness and His Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, what a powerful story, that last one you just shared. Well, I, wanna, I wanna drop one thought from something we said earlier, because uh, I just really get this in my spirit for those of you who are listening uh, right now to the broadcast. And you know, when we talked about Jesus earlier and He sent all the disciples away, it's because He was tired. Mm. I, I just really sense this. There's a lot of folks listening right now and you're just tired and you just don't have any strength left. You, you don't, there's not more of you to give. Well, here's the cool thing about being with God. God is asking for you to just be open. He's not asking for really more than that when you spend time with him. And when you do that, his rest comes into you and some of you are listening and you really need that rest right now. That's what holiness does. It mm -hmm. brings who God is into you. Yeah. And some of you are, it's, it's almost like you're starving on the inside because it's been such a long time since you've had a really good dose of Jesus, Yeah. you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, services, that kind of stuff. I'm talking about one-on-one, -on -one, just you and Jesus, whether it's in the car or I, you know, the first season I didn't have an office and the only place I could get alone was going in the garage <laughs> because the kids weren't hollering there <laughs> yeah. and so the yeah. dogs weren't going and we have two cats too. That's a whole other story, <laughs> you know, but it was the only place that was quiet. Yeah. And that's where I'd have my prayer time. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. I used to, um, you know, having my youngest, who's now four, that whole, this, that four year thing kind of set me back and I went through some, uh, postpartum depression that I had an experience wow. with the others. And so, yeah, I was just, it was dry. It was lonely. I, and I finally just had to push, push myself out of that. And wow. also with some friends, but hiding in my car, I've hid in sure. my car to get quiet with the Lord more. Yeah. I'm guilty of that. Yeah. <laughs> more since my youngest has been born than ever before. I'm like, I'm just in my, sometimes yeah. I'll check. I'm in the, my car, honey. I'll be in in just a few minutes. I'm just trying to get some quiet time yeah. before I come in. So yeah. Um, Anything else? 
I, you, I think we need to pray for everybody. Yeah, let's pray for everybody. The other thing that was kind of coming back to me was the home. We, we touched on mm. it a, a little bit here and there. And I think sometimes, especially over COVID, COVID the home got hit so hard, you know, yeah. the family. So anything else you want to share or pray into that, um, just to really bring, you know, the Holy Spirit, bring God into the home. We need him. Yeah. You know, so. You know, one of the things that I love in scripture, it says, if you ask, he'll come. It's not any more complicated than that. So that's what we want to do. We just want to yeah. ask for the Holy Spirit to come and be with you where you are right now. Maybe you're in the car, maybe you're at work, maybe uh, you're just, well, where you are and you just need that touch of God. So Father, in the name yeah. of Jesus, yes, Jesus, I'm asking God that you do what only you can do. God, be there present in their situation. Lord, the questions, the maybe the anger, the hurt, the pain, the different situations that are going on, the tiredness, God, I'm asking, Lord, that you just quiet those things right now. Lord, just like it says in Psalms 23, you make us to lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. Father, help us to be in that place of rest, to be in that place of peace. Yes, Jesus. And God, it says there you restore our soul. And I'm asking God that you would just begin to restore hearts and minds and bodies and, and just give strength, God. Restore, Father, inside of them right now. I thank you for that Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, God, that it doesn't matter where we've been, what we've done, mm -hmm. you were always there for us. Yes, God. And so, Father, I pray for that person who feels lost this morning. And God, I'm just asking that you just wrap your arms around them and just show your love and show yourself real to them. In the name yes, of Lord. Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We'll see you guys next week. Bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're interested in checking out more of our podcasts as they come available, please download our app in your device's app store or check us out on your podcast platform at Garden Valley Church. We look forward to seeing you next time.